So now we're on component five. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting really, really close to the end. How many of you feel like your brain is already full? Yeah, like drinking from a fire hose, right? Okay, hang on. There's a couple of key points I wanna emphasize and we're good. But instructional decision making. We talk about keeping the kids on the bus. Why do we have to worry about the kids not being on the bus? We're in the middle of the trip, right? What are they gonna do? Do you know kids? I, it wouldn't put, I wouldn't put it past some of my middle school students to have dove out the window in motion on the highway. They, squirrel, you know, there's no telling. There's no telling what might come up, right? You've done all this work. You've studied your context, you've developed a pre-assessment, you've administered the pre-assessment, you defined your learning goals, you made perfect, perfect plans that are perfectly suited for your kids. How could it possibly go wrong? You've been in a classroom, clearly, because I hear chuckling. William Butler Yeats writes a poem that I think really applies here. There's one line I particularly like. Things fall apart, the center cannot hold. I love that line. Granted, it's a poem about anarchy. Oh, no, wait, that does apply. So, what do you do when stuff goes wrong? You have to adapt. You have to modify. If they fall off the bus, what are you going to do? Circle back and go get them. So, you're going to do this a hundred times. So at some point, you're going to be aware that you lost a kid, or that you lost several kids, or that you lost the entire class. But at some point, you're going to realize that. You're going to say to yourself, oh no, they fell off the bus. Don't run them over. Circle back and go get them. Right? That means changing your plan. So all you're going to have to do is tell us about two of them. Tell us about two times when you changed your plan. Would you like an example? Okay. One of my favorites. I had a student who, uh, he was in tier three of the RTI program. Response to intervention, tier three is when they're like this close to getting an IEP. It's pretty confirmed that they've got something going on. How do we deal with it? He was in tier three of the response to intervention program being evaluated for an emotional behavioral disturbance. Now, on the upside, I never saw that in my class. But then by the same token, when he needed to, the, the track was right outside my back door. I was in a portable at the time. When he needed to, I'd say, dude, take a lap, go for it. If you need that, come back ready to learn. And he'd go tear around, not just like, yeah, I'm killing time. He would tear around the track because he knew that's what he needed to be able to come back and learn. So I give my pre-assessment. We're doing our lessons along the way. He's really catching on. He's learning a lot. He really gets it. I'm very excited for him. Johnny, because you know every made up student's name is Johnny. Johnny's there, right? Then it comes time for the post-assessment. I know Johnny arrives because of this. Remember, I'm in a portable. <laughs> Hello. I turn over. I hear the door open. Do you know what has to happen if you hear the door open? Yeah. <laughs> I hear his backpack enter the room. And then he stomps over. He wanted me to know where the chair was. You know what I'm thinking to myself at this time? What a perfect time to give this kid a post assessment. Right? No! 
Clearly he's upset. Clearly he's upset. So I send him to the counselor. I let him go take a lap. Whatever it is he needs to do, that is not the day to make him take my test. So that's a perfect example of an accommodation, a, an instructional decision for one kid. In another case, I gave horrible instructions. You ever had that moment? Yeah, when you're like, but I told him what to do. What's happening? And you can see the whole room deteriorate around you. <laughs> Sixth grade, they deteriorate pretty, pretty effectively, right? Well, this was a class where I had a student with Asperger's. He's on the autism spectrum disorder. So of course the stimulation's going up. What's fixing to happen to him? Get not good, right? So I realized that my instructions are horrible. They don't get it. I'm like, okay, 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 stop. Explain the task for them step by step. Walk them through it, make the changes, give them the examples. Oh. And then fix everything before the next class comes in. Thankfully, I had my planning period then. So these instructional decisions are huge. That's how you demonstrate your effectiveness. All of this stuff, we've already talked about. What you did, why you did it, how it supports your learning goals, what happened. The exemplary stuff is based on deeper reflection. Read those indicators because you can wrap your head around what that requires of you.